I've talked to a friend of mine who's from Brazil who has a completely different take on the new leader of Brazil. Like, he's more positive about it. And then I've talked to other people that say he's a monster. Yeah. Um, I mean, if people in Brazil are living through the current chaos, I can understand why they might go to a Duterte-type figure to say it's going to be messy, but he's going to clean it up. Right. But he certainly seems like a monster. <laughs> yeah. And they, they're they experiencing some crazy economic crisis as well right? yeah and it was the fastest growing, growing economy yeah. in, in latin america it was booming yeah it was just, boom just a few years ago yeah so yeah. it's like this roller coaster ride we did a film there recently and uh i might might get the numbers slightly wrong but the amount of people that were murdered in brazil um in 2017 i believe it was was double more than double the amount that were murdered in syria jesus yeah Christ. i think it was seventy two thousand. yeah and after the World Cup and Olympics, the, the trafficking gangs and the, the police militias just retook all of those areas that were pacified to, to you know, protect the tourists during the, the World Cup and Olympics. So that violence has just come right back to the favelas. <sighs> See, again, there's just so much shit to pay attention yeah, to. Yeah. And Rio, the image of Rio is still, you know, Samba on the beach. And, yeah. You know, it's, I've been a few times. Right. Yeah, I've been I for will. UFC events. It's beautiful people, very yep. nice, very friendly. But then you go two or three miles up into the hills. Yeah. It's another world. Well, we drove, when you land at the airport, you drive through the favelas on the way to Rio, and you're like, whoa, this is, uh, this is a different kind of poverty. And during the World Cup and Olympics, they put billboards next to that road to block the view of the favelas. Did they really? And those billboards are now starting to fall apart, and you can now... See. Now see in again, yeah. Wow. And you can hear it. If you if you stay close to there, you'll hear it. I mean, we went into the favela, favelas many times. We, we saw one guy who was suspected of being a police informer. Um, so the, the trafficking gangs had captured him, slashed at his leg so he was lying on the ground, put four rifles to his head and just unloaded. And his chin was still kind of where it should be, but everything else was... This is when you, you got there while... We got there happening. right afterwards, sorry. No, we didn't witness it happening. Um, we got there right afterwards, but yeah, it's it's... I mean, hideous violence there on a, on a massive scale. Yeah. And also, I got into an argument with someone the other day about this. Um, deeply racist. Uh, you know, the, the, the rich people in Ipanema tend to be white European descendants. The poor kids getting shot in the favelas are almost all black. And if you walk into a bar in Ipanema with a black girl, everyone will assume she's a prostitute. If you walk into a bar in Ipanema with a black guy, everyone will assume he's a drug dealer. Um, and again, the exact opposite of, of the public image of, so of Brazil. I Ipanema is the more wealthy area because there is. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the very that's that's the very wealthy, nice beach um, area with all the you know, nice hotels and apartment blocks. But they still must get robbed all the time down there, right? It used to be that, that the violence was separated from the really rich areas, but there are now a lot of wealthy Brazilians leaving because it's 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 affecting everywhere now. I mean, the, the, one of the experts we interviewed in in the last film said. Um, I believe it was one in three Rio residents will get caught in crossfire at some point over the course of a year. I, I, I might be wrong on that. I believe over it was one in three. Of a year? Yeah, yeah. But it a was a year? massive, massive number. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're anywhere near a favela, you'll hear it most nights. You'll hear shots being fired most nights. And not like boom, boom, boom. You know, you'll hear a fight going on. Jesus Christ. How much time do you spend over there? Uh, three weeks, I believe it was. Wow. And what are you covering? Uh, we did a film about the pacification campaign, the police and army clearing mm -hmm. the favelas before the World Cup and Olympics. So we went back just to see... Just to sort of illuminate it for people to, to think that this is what Brazil's actually like. And, and see what, yeah, what happened afterwards. And, right. And, and those areas oh. were abandoned as soon as the World Cup and Olympics were, were over. 